Texas has historically managed its groundwater, or frankly not managed it, under what we used to call the rule of capture, which meant that groundwater was so mysterious, couldn't know enough about it to actually regulate it. And that was true up until the legislature took the first steps toward managing groundwater in Texas by enabling the creation of uh, groundwater conservation districts across the state. This is just an opportunity for members of the public to make general comments. Uh, my name is Charlie Flatman and I'm speaking on behalf of the Hill Country Alliance. Most of them are organized on county lines. There's about a hundred of them. And some of our aquifers would have 14 or 15 counties in them. This becomes particularly acute when you have groundwater districts over the same aquifer that have completely separate philosophies. You'll oftentimes find a groundwater district that wants to export for money all of the groundwater under its jurisdiction right next door to a groundwater district that's saying, not out of my backyard, we're going to keep our water. A groundwater district has limited authority, but we do have some control over the spacing of wells, the production from wells, how deep they're drilled, how they're completed. We, we offer a variety of, of opportunities to protect the aquifer and protect both existing wells and the new wells that are being put in. The amount of development that is happening is staggering. My name is Ed Pope. I am a director on the Hayes Trinity Groundwater Conservation District Board of Directors. Several years ago when my well collapsed in the, during the dry season, I became very interested in groundwater. Uh, and the, the drought just brings that more and more to our uh, attention each day. The challenges that we're facing now, the shortages of water in the state, the increased population, we always want to say, well, can we just add 10 more people or can we add 10 more subdivisions or can we add another 50,000 people to this city? How can we do that still being able to produce enough water? And some groundwater districts are fairly well healed in terms of their financial situation. We charge a small ad valorem tax just like the school district or the county government or the cities. The groundwater districts are able to collect ad valorem taxes, most of them. They are reluctant to do so, and so most of their revenue comes from permits on wells, uh, which is frankly not enough. We fight an uphill battle with our budget every year. We, we operate on the minimum amount of money each year, employing only two people. Everybody else serves as volunteers, including the board. Obviously, you need to have enough money coming into the district to do more than just have a telephone on the front desk and, and accomplish nothing except answering the phone. Generally, that takes, in, in my opinion, somewhere between two hundred and three hundred thousand dollars for a small district per year. The current system is is not what we need. We need to be more closely. Um, managing these resources at least along aquifer lines, but we need to ensure that local people continue to have a voice. There are people that, that may not like it, they would like to see the state regulate all of it, but I can assure you the local people want to maintain local control of the groundwater because it's a very local issue. Mm -hmm.